Hello friends, it's Nico here and we are styling a wig for Lloyd. First we are going to make sure that the parting is aligned to the head. This wig is a little styled for him, but every time you buy a wig you always want to style it for yourself. Uh, as well as it's usually longer than the actual character's hair just because, you know, we all have different size heads and it's kind of meant so you style it for yourself. So this is just how I like to style my wigs and starting with the first thing you want to do. I've mentioned it before, but steaming completely transforms a wig. Being as this is obviously not a lace front, I like to lift up uh, the front of it so it kind of gives off that lace front look like it's coming out of your scalp. It's not always going to be perfect, but it really works. I really suggest you try this. So you want to comb the top and then get the steamer close to it so you can make that shape and just let it air dry basically. And then while that does that, you move on to the rest of the hair. You want to comb the whole hair. As you're steaming it, just comb it down. It's going to be very wet, but cutting wet hair is actually easier. So right now I know my elbow is on the middle of the screen. Sorry, it's really hard to position this, but right now I am layering it on top of sharpening those edges around it. So I, I do this, most of the video is going to be me doing this back and forth, all the front. I do use a reference picture that I always keep right next to me. You don't see it here, but it's there on top of the spy family in the background. Make sure you use a good pair of scissors. A lot of mistakes that I see cosplayers doing, and you know, it works because I've done it too, is not replace your scissors. It's gonna make such a difference if your scissors cut good. It'll make the wig look less blunt when you cut onto it, look more edged and sharp on the, on the tips. There's the tips on the edges, so you want to make sure you're using a good pair of scissors. It doesn't have to be expensive, they sell them everywhere. Just make sure that it's not, you know, dull and it's not cutting well. I'm not a professional hairstylist. I learned everything I know from YouTube, so um, I just seen people pinch it. And to me that works, especially when the hair is fairly wet. Trust the process, just be very patient with it. Don't rush styling a wig if you want it to turn out good. And as you are cutting it, you are combing it with your hand to let those extra hairs or the hairs that you cut off kind of fall out. Use the little pins to kind of hold the hair in place. This just gives me an idea of how it's looking and how close it is to looking how I need it to look. Keep doing this all over the hair just to make it shorter. So I switch back and forth from cutting the edges to the best way of creating layers is going from the top and just slipping down. It creates sharper edges as well. Um, so you just keep doing that until you see that is the length that you need it to be. Honestly, this is the best way to cut length rather than go always from the bottom. The bottom is just to clean it up a bit and also get an idea of how you want it to look. So I do pin it here because as you can see Lloyd's hair at the bottom, it is like an um, undercut. With wigs, it's a little hard to get that done so you want to try to get it as close as you can get or as short as you can get. You want to try to cut it as short as you can to mimic that undercut effect. However, you don't want to cut it too short where the cap is showing through it. Fortunately, this wig is pretty good. The hair is pretty thick. I didn't have any issues of it showing through it. So make sure you have one that has uh, plenty of hair to work with it. I continue doing pretty much the same throughout most of the video. Again, don't rush the process. You want to go slowly. You want to make sure you're cutting what you need to cut. And I should have said this at the beginning of the video, but make sure you measure your head.
These heads tend to be smaller than your average head, so make sure you try it on first. Make sure that you know the length. Or in this case, I didn't have to try it because I already know this head. I always use it, so I know what length I need it to be. Sometimes you can mark it on the same head where your eyes start and how you know your forehead looks. So yeah, just a tip. The best way to cut as close as you can and as short as you can is doing the the layering down, the cutting down motion um, to layer it and make it look again like not blunt. Just make it look like it's blending in. You can't cut it that close, unfortunately, because it's not meant for that. It is not a front lace or a kind of wig that you can do it that way. But don't worry, this is gonna work. I'm gonna show you couple hacks that I use along the way so just keep watching trust the process I continue to move the hair aside to create that under layer we want to make it look separated from the rest of the hair I know um, a lot of people don't do it this way because they, they don't want their the wig cap to show or the the wefts to show but this way, it, it does work. Um, again, this wig is pretty good for that. It does have a lot of wefts, so it, it did work. Moving on to the other side of the wig. Now, remember this whole time I use so many references. Like I usually when I'm cutting a wig, I like to use references from the side, from the back. Just understand that, do your best and go slow. Take it easy. As you can see, I go back and forth with cutting styles. I like to cut the bottom just to get it to the length that I need it to faster. And then I go over dragging the blades to cut for more layers. We are trying to get it as close as possible without showcasing the webs or the, um, the sewing on the bottom. So you're going slowly, you're looking under the hair to make sure like how much is it going to take for you to not show that part. Layer it. That's most of this part. I know I cut it. I am so sorry. I, I did not realize it didn't fit. But most of this part is just cutting some layers. I do need it to be shorter so I am cutting it this way as well and just be very gentle with the scissors you don't want to press it you just want to let the blades cut it kind of like um like a razor you just want to go over them you don't want to close the whole blade because that'll just chop a blunt piece of hair getting closer to the length that I wanted it at. Now I'm just cleaning up the corners here. Keep in mind styling is the biggest part of it so you're just cutting this part but when it comes to getting the spikes and everything you want that you're gonna let the hairspray and the wax do all the work okay so just be patient. 
Now we're going to go ahead and move on to teasing the hair. I want to create a little bit more volume. As you can see in the back, I felt like it needed more layers and more layers. It's easier to create more volumes with them. But once you do tease it and once you do hairspray it and everything, you're going to start seeing the wig come to life and giving it shape. Finally happy with the length. Now to the fun part. We are going to use the steamer once more. The good thing about the steamer is that the steamer shapes the wig to the direction that you want it to be and then it air dries facing that way. So it minimizes the work that you're going to put into when you iron it or when you style it. It just kind of does it for you and then you go over the beautiful work. And look at this. Look, look at how sleek it looks. Like look at this part. This is very satisfying. Bam. It's so easy. I, I can't live without a steamer. So now I'm pulling up those hairs because his hair, this is the laid back. Your hair looks sexy pushed back style. So um, I did go ahead and do the, the top part there. So I don't burn my fingers. I did put it and then I styled it and kind of held it for a little bit and let the air dry it and do what it needs to do. And then I continue teasing. The hair was a little wet, but the teasing works. Make sure you're doing the teasing under it, of course, and you're just gonna let it fall. Um, and then it, it'll make it easier for when you have to wax it because it has all the volume that you need it to have. And then I just continue teasing it back and forth, little strands from the top. Now we move on to ironing. Make sure the hair is dry at this point. Now with the iron, I'm just gonna curl it inwards to have the hairs push themselves back and hold back. Make sure the heat is under 200 Fahrenheit. I never had any wig of mine burn as long as it's under 200. Continue doing this around the whole head, the whole back. Sometimes I twist them upwards, like do a little spikes upwards because his hair is not always inwards. As you can see, he has a couple spikes to the sides that I want to bring out. And also it helps to volumize the corners and the top, like the, the root parts. So you, you just keep doing this all over. Make sure you clip it back to be able to work on the under ones. Don't forget about them. It does make a huge difference, even if you sometimes you can't even notice them. It makes a huge difference when it comes to the volume that you need or just the, the final look uh, overall. Here I'm making some of the spikes. You don't need to go too crazy with the exact spikes at the end of the day. You are your own person and you're creating a look that's going to look good on you. You don't have to be exact to the character, so it's whatever makes you comfortable. Sometimes I style wigs differently just to frame my face better. I just love these little stray spikes that are uneven. It just makes it look more natural. Oh my goodness, I discovered this hack and I am I'm dying. I'm dying. It's just so good. It is dry shampoo but for brunettes. So it is a darker color. Um the closer you are to it, the darker it is. I messed up a little bit there as you can see, but nothing my fingers couldn't do. So basically I just spray it around even here so it looks like roots. So it makes it look even more natural. And I just blend it in to the rest of the hair. And now the best part, in my opinion, is the wax. So you're gonna go over those little corners, just make them look more pointy, more sleek, more clean.
this is my favorite part because once you put the wax like it, you start to see the shape that you initially wanted and it's so fun to see your creation and what you've been working for hours on get that look that you've been looking for you put the wax on your fingertips and you just continue going over every little corner as well as the bottom usually i put wax on the undercuts so it looks closer like shorter but uh, as you can see i'm putting it in every corner here i'm making little spikes that weren't showing off as much as i wanted them to as well and in this final step you're gonna set everything of course this character it does not have ridiculous spikes so usually with wigs that are extremely spiky you're using the hairspray as you go in this case it is a bit of more natural look as well more natural character hair <laughs> so you're pretty much done i mean i hope it helped you in any way let me know if you like this type of video please make sure to comment down below like and subscribe to my channel and hit the notification bell if you want to be notified thank you all very much for watching here is the cinematic for your viewing pleasure thank you